Hi. It's Tash and Carly. And you're listening to Motherhood. Not as we planned. So get comfy, grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and let's start talking about all the things too many of us avoid discussing. Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode. We have a really exciting guest but first let's have a little catch up. I have my divorce party. Was I could have I, oh, I know like honestly it was so gutted. I guess that's the downfall our weekend on the, the wrong weekend. So I know. I have the kids on weekends when I'm free. I know. It's not ideal. But yeah, so you were there in spirit. Yeah. It was just so fun. I just feel like it was like, why do you need an excuse to grab all your girls, have good food, music, drinks, and just have fun so no it was good i feel like i really needed it and there was no drunk texting anyone you shouldn't have texted no there wasn't more like just like drunk crying in my pillow no i'm joking um yeah no it did take quite a lot to like not but um i must say i think like after the party like on it was on the saturday night and on the sunday i did feel quite like down because i feel like it was like a good distraction yeah um like with the breakup and everything i feel like i like put all my energy into like oh but i've got a party i'm gonna be with all my girls and then sunday i had no plans so yeah sunday wasn't great but it's a new week and um yeah (laughs) you're right i don't know know why i'm laughing (laughs) I'm trying not to overshare. Can we? <laughs> trying not to overshare. But no, it was good. Um, and yeah, now just continuing to plod. Lovely. What about you? I had quite a nice week. Uh, what did I do? Last Friday, I had a little random date day, date night to um, a theatre. Oh, lovely. Sophisticated. Yeah. I did, actually. What do you really yeah. nice? It was It was a Midsummer Night stream. Yeah. It wasn't like old school Shakespeare it was like um like an alternative like modern version of it it was really good funny. it was really funny Love. really good um it was my weekend with the kids we had quite a chill weekend actually which was needed we did a cinema day which what did you say it's a great vibration it will make oh i want to see it I know. it will make you want to I'm, really I'm seeing it during half time i really booked booked um, yeah lovely uh we had a party and yeah, and then Monday night, um, me and my boyfriend spent the night planning our Paris room around Paris, which we go on tomorrow. Amazing. So yeah, I mean Have you ever been? I've been to Paris before, yeah. Okay. Um I'm excited to do it like romantically. No, and just like I feel like we have a lot of fun together. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I'm just really excited like to get dressed up nice and I don't know, like, as well, I feel like, for me, at the moment, I'm very, very aware that I'm approaching, like, one year of my marriage breaking down, and there's certain dates, i.e. today, is a triggering date for me. It's like, it's like remembering. It's remembering. That happens. Happens. I get I really get that. Um, like, a year ago today, my, my dad called me and told me he was diagnosed with cancer, but then there's other things that have come out about my marriage since then that... I now know about that date, which I find really hard. But it's also really nice to know, like like I've said before, like last Valentine's, I was in such a bad place. And it's when, I don't know, I had big, big red flags um, coming out. And I I do feel a bit triggered by it. But it's, I'm also really excited that like this year couldn't be any more of a contrast. Yeah. Like... I'm doing really positive things with someone who loves me, who I love, who wants to make me feel special when I was like begging for that last year. It's yeah. just, um, yeah, it's a real oxymoron. How good is that? Yeah, I don't know. What I don't know. It's, 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 like, like, it's a right. bit like a contradiction, like two opposites. Okay. Um, Sounds rude, oxymoron. Oxymoron. <laughs> no, no, like moron. Oh, no, like you oxymoron. You like sexuals. No, and we try. So, yeah. <laughs> Why are you touching your hurt? Oh, your oh, hurt. hurt me. Boobies. 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 Um, yes. So, it's, I don't know, I feel like the next few weeks, not that I'm like looking back and like thinking about things, but you know, when there's like certain dates that you're like, this. 
this, this, this. I think that's the most normal thing, good and bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, and I think, like, it's valid and all you can do is kind of, at least you can have that, like, positive twist and be like, oh, but you know what? Look where I am now. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, if that's it. I think in my head, I was like, last year, I, I literally, I think it was like a week or two after this, I literally begged someone to love me like mm-hmm. the lowest of the low I've ever done in my life I was literally crying begging someone to love me like mm-hmm. I look back now and I think wow yeah um guilty yeah we've all been there mm-hmm. you know and I think now I'm obviously in such a good place I'm with someone who I don't have to beg to love me who genuinely does love me mm-hmm. and loves me with my flaws and wants to make me feel safe and cared for and special and I don't know it's such um what I'm experiencing now is like even in my, my positive part of my old relationship I still never felt this cared for yeah which is I find like yeah. I don't know you learn a lot but yeah it's been a it's been a nice week um I just feel like these next couple of weeks as we approach like my one year of being on my own I feel like I'm gonna certain things and dates are gonna come up and I'm gonna be like oh that's weird it's just a roller coaster yeah. you're just gonna ride it don't gonna you gonna ride it <laughs> let's it's a roll oh god okay I, I okay. You're right, got it. Yeah, yeah. On and on. You're right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I clearly wasn't a boys' own slash Ronan Keaton fan. More of a backstreet boys girl. I like both. Right. Anyway, shall we get into let's get on no, this week's episode? So guys, we are so excited to introduce the amazing Lydia Bright. I mean, when we asked you guys who you wanted to see on this podcast, Lydia was that you were up there like up every there. single week whenever we've asked like people have asked for you because really? okay yeah well a lot of our followers are single parents and um i think that obviously you know watching your journey and seeing what you're like with loretta i do find like i think it's really inspiring to people i think you've always like come across as like a really strong independent mum it's like like I'm sure it's really hard, but it, you are nailing it. Like, oh, and the things you girl. do with her and like, you know, the trips you go on and the fact like, I don't know, for me, it's really empowering to watch you be like, just because I'm a single mom, it's not going to impact how I want to, like the experiences I want my child to have. And that's very much where I am on my journey with it as well. So yeah, I feel like it's really inspiring because I think sometimes people could think, becoming a single parent could be a limitation and you know suddenly you can't access all these things and don't get me wrong it is a lot harder but I love how driven you are and yeah I mean there's so much to talk about I always I always think like like you said obviously there's negative aspects to it but I always I think that becoming a single mum I honestly feel like I just thrived as a person becoming a single mum like for me I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me I think all round in so many aspects of my life like career like happiness um I just think that I wouldn't be as driven as what I am now I wouldn't be as happy as I am now had I not have done it this way as a single yeah. parent so um, that, I think that's so nice to hear. Would you kind of take us back for anyone that doesn't know, kind yeah. of like, because your journey has been quite different to ours. We were both um, with the father of our children. Both married. Ma- for quite a while before we ended up becoming single mums. So yeah. take us back to kind of like falling pregnant with Loretta and all of that. Yeah. So me and Loretta's father were together uh, two years before I fell pregnant. We were living together. Um, And Loretta, yeah, it was just, it was completely planned. It was spoken about, I think I was 20, I want to say 28 when I fell pregnant. Yeah. 28 when I fell pregnant, I think I was. Um, Loretta's dad's a little bit older than me, so he would have been... 34 maybe um yeah so I it was 
something like I've always wanted to be a mum. It's something that I've all like. I think if it wasn't for Towie, then maybe I would have been a mum a lot younger. Um, really? But, yeah, like it's always been like my number one goal in life. So, um, so hold on, how old were you when you were in when you were on Towie? Okay, I was eighteen when I did Towie. Oh my God. I think had I not been had I not done Towie because of Towie obviously meant that life was so busy and I had all these amazing opportunities and um, it also led on to other TV shows. So, you know, I did like shows where I was out of the country for like three months at a time and stuff. So I think had it not been for Towie and me not had that kind of career that was very like magical but like a roller coaster like here there and everywhere and super super busy like ever since I was 18 um maybe I would have had children earlier because I um oh it was always just a massive dream dream for me but just opportunities meant that it got stalled Mm -hmm. um uh but yeah when I eventually felt pregnant with Loretta yeah I was with her dad for two years in my head I thought it was going to be um like I went into it thinking that we were going to be together for, forever. Um, and as I said, yeah, we were living together. Um, and yeah, it just didn't didn't work out that way. So I think when I first... Um, so me and Larissa's dad, it all broke down when I was about 12 weeks pregnant. So quite early on. Oh, I didn't know it was that early. Yeah, it was like wow. 12, 12 weeks. I think it was when her dad moved out. Um, look, I'm not saying like the relationship was perfect. Of course it wasn't. I mean, what relationship is perfect? Yeah. Um, we we were bickering and arguing, but for me it was it was quite unexpected. Um uh so I think that just came with like so much emotion. Like And you've got crazy hormones in pregnancy as well. Crazy hormones. Oh my gosh, crazy hormones. Um I was, yeah, heartbroken. Well, I think go, going through a breakup in general, not even pregnant, is so consuming. I think the, the hardest thing in the whole wide world. Like, yeah, I, I know this. Like, and this might sound really horrible, and but I have actually found some of the breakups in my life harder than this. Might sound awful, but I found it harder than some people, like family deaths in my life. Like, I actually emotionally i really i really have struggled um, like people through, say that break up breakups are like you're grieving the loss of someone but yeah. they haven't died yeah but it yeah, is you do go through the concept yeah you go through those emotions of of grief and i think that sometimes yeah. people don't realize how difficult a breakup is and so i can't imagine going through it when you're 12 weeks pregnant not only are you having to deal with the breakup but then it's all those like dreams that you kind of thought like we've always mentioned that when you have children with someone you a lot of the time most of the time I'd like to think you don't do it thinking you're then going to do it on your own definitely well look some people do and some people go down you know the sperm donor route and something yeah like yeah of course but they know that already they know that but i think when it's majority of, of the majority of single mums yeah you set out with a different course and uh, yeah. when your life gets thrown off course it's it's scary especially when it's out of your hands you know and there's nothing you can do about it it it's it's scary it's kind of you know diverting your life and yeah, all your dreams and stuff into a into like a different route. And I think that sometimes that can be, yeah, daunting. It w- it really wasn't a great pregnancy for sure. Like, and that's that saddens me because I feel like I didn't get that like mm. magical, you know, laying on the sofa and rubbing my belly. And yeah, and I didn't get it, all of that. And I just feel like I was. I was yeah I was in I wasn't in a great place when I was pregnant um but then on the contrast I think that the reason that I enjoyed those early years of Loretta being born that newborn bubble I think maybe because I did go through such a tough time in pregnancy so when she was born and all the magic that came from her being a newborn and being in lockdown with just her I think that I enjoyed it so much because of I'd come from such a 
sad period in my t- in my life. So the contrast of then having Loretta and she was like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. It just everything, I think, felt more magical because of I'd struggled so much. Where where do you think where do you think that kind of like mind frame changed from being like really like down and like struggling yeah. with your pregnancy? Was it literally just as you gave birth? Or I feel like I really felt empowered in my pregnancy as soon as it came out that I was doing it alone because I don't know if you feel the same, but I feel like single mums we almost become like a little bit of a club. Like, 100%. and I feel like as soon as I announced it, I was so worried that people were going to judge me mm-hmm. and people were going to, you know, I don't know. I, I The judgment thing, it really annoys me now that I worried so much about what other people were going to think. I I thought, oh, like people are going to think of me negatively and people are going to think I'm irresponsible or, you know, all these things. That got, I weren't in the best headspace mentally, so I was just worrying about things that really I shouldn't have been worrying about. Um, but the minute that I announced that I was doing it solo and I was so lucky that my interview, um, I did my announcement shoot with Hello Magazine and the journalist that interviewed me, um, she actually became a single mum during pregnancy as well. So she handled the article because, I mean, I turned up for my announcement shoot. I mean, they thought that it was going to be a two-person shoot until like two days before. Wow. I turned up to my shoot and I was like, trying like I was just it, I was all over the place and she handled the interview so delicately and so beautifully and so gracefully and the minute that it got announced and I was like right everyone knows now like like it's it's out there and it's it's done um that felt like a a weight had been lifted off my shoulders because yeah. I thought I'm not gonna have all the questions it like yeah. do you know what I mean like all my family and friends, they'll read the article, they'll know, and I'm not going to have to explain it to everyone because the more you talk about it, the more it makes you upset. Yeah. Um, and um, the minute that that came out, I received so much support from single mums. Like, honestly, like, my DMs were flooded. Like, just, like, endless, endless messages from single mums. I'd Like, people would come up to me in the street and speak to me, like, I just, I received so much support and I feel like that really empowered me. Like during my pregnancy, like I was like, I started building up the strength and I was like, you know what? I can do this. Like I'm going to do this and I'm going to thrive and it's going to be the most amazing thing. And then the minute that Loretta was born, so I started feeling empowered in my pregnancy, but I still obviously had that like sadness, that heartbreak, that loneliness. Those emotions were still still there. Um, as soon as Loretta was born, they just went. Really? They just went. I was like, I don't feel lonely. I don't feel sad. I don't feel heartbroken. It's all like I've accepted. It is what it is. I'm actually fine with that. Like, yeah. and then those two years that um, we were in and out of lockdown, I honestly think that that like bond that magical like bond that we got together like the simple things in life everything being stripped back honestly you just sit there sometimes I think I don't actually think there would be space for anybody else because I'm so in love with my child and I so love this and I don't want anything to tarnish I didn't want anything to tarnish that because as I said look relationships aren't perfect and they go through like the ups and downs and me and Loretta's dad you know we used to bicker of course and I thought like I actually don't have to worry about any of that. Like yeah. my house is such a happy house the whole time because of it's just me and my baby. Like and yeah, like I just I absolutely loved it. Like I definitely think that I would never have been as happy and enjoyed motherhood as much if I would have been doing it as a two parent job. What was your birth like? Like oh my gosh, you... I had the best birth. You did yeah. you? Yeah, it was it was absolutely incredible. But I think Jesus was looking down at me and just thought. <laughs> She you let a girl pregnancy. give the girl the birth. Yeah, give the girl a break. Yeah, and also, so during my pregnancy, oh my god, during my pregnancy, not only did I have the stress of the um, breakup, I was renovating my house, which obviously was oh like stressful. Then I got burgled. Then I've got um, one of my one of my uh, properties that I uh, rent out. Oh my god, I had a massive court case with one of the tenants. Honestly, it was so stressful during my pregnancy. So I think that someone was looking down at me and thought, don't let this girl tear. 
<laughs> please let her, let her have a good pregnancy. So I, yeah, I had the most magical birth. I was. It was her dad? Was her dad at the birth? Her dad was there. Yeah, her dad was at every scan. Her dad was at the birth. He was actually really amazing at the birth, and everything got put aside. Like yeah. through every scan and it, like the birth means that everything got put aside. Um, and um, yeah, I was in active labour for four hours. Right. Um, yeah, I gave birth in the water. I didn't oh, care. Great. That was my biggest yeah. fear. Like what the terror yeah. in. Oh my gosh, because yeah. I'm so squeamish. So, um, yeah, I was so worried about that. I had a really amazing, amazing birth. Like, it was, I it was, I like that, isn't it? Yeah. I think yeah, I'm actually looking forward to giving birth again. Like, that's how good it was. Oh, how nice is that? I mean, I had like emergency C section. Really? Uh, yeah. So, no, yeah, so no yours is obviously going to be traumatic. Yeah. yeah but, um, oh, that's so nice. I've filmed what? the whole thing. I love that. Yeah, we filmed it. We propped her dad. Propped it. I said, I really want to get it on camera. So my dad like propped the um, not, not like that. I'm ever going to show it. Thing, like everything's out. <laughs> but I'm I get the tripod out with the ring light. <laughs> but I just thought I want to. I want to be able to like watch. Yeah. It one day. So he, as soon as I like got in the water, like as soon as I started pushing, I think it's like 40 minute video. He propped the camera up oh. and he got such a good angle. And I filmed the whole thing, and I've I've watched it back so many times and cried oh, my eyes out. I've I was going to say like people. that must be a tearjerker. Oh my gosh, yeah! And like my friends and things before they've given birth and stuff, I've shown them if they've been pregnant. I've shown them the video to show them like a positive birth story and that. Like, yeah, that's it, nice. It always gets people in flood. Yeah, I, and you know what? I think it's really nice that that he was there and that you were um, able to kind of like put everything aside and just be amicable for the moments that like. Must definitely sound. yeah i've always been like that though like through everything with it like i i grew up with the most amazing dad that was like such a massive part of my life and still is like i don't know what i would do about my dad my dad is like my co-parent so like he we are so so close so yeah i was always very much like no matter what like we have to we have to work through this because i don't want anything to ever affect yeah. your relationship no, um, absolutely. Yeah. And what was what, what was like the Retta's relationship with, like with him in like the first couple of years? Like it was hard because that? of it was hard because of COVID. So it was oh, like she was yeah. so so she was so um, attached to me. I mean, she even is now. Like Loretta still gets like separation anxiety. Like she's so confident. So it's it's strange because she's such a confident child. Um, she is like she'll always like light up every room and she's like a massive extrovert but she always has to have me like there like she's always like keeping lookout as um, same yeah mine exactly yeah. similar age as well yeah I do also think like some of it has to do with lockdown like they're so used to it I feel like he's so used to it just being me and him like all the time it was literally just us like we used to do everything together and then I felt like I, he really struggles in those social situations. Like he's always got to come back and like physically touch me and have that like yeah. physical reassurance. Then he can go off again. But I've noticed yeah. as well. Yeah, I think that she's getting better with school now. Like because she'll go to school. But I remember like those first like that first like year of nursery as well. It was like every drop mm. off, it was like I'd leave and I'd feel like my heart was being ripped out. Like what? it was just so tough. Um. So yeah, look, it was it was hard navigating something solid because of covid her dad was still working during covid my my dad was high risk and i formed a bubble with my family so it was yeah. it was tough but look we made it work um and yes yeah, she's got a relationship with her dad she still sees her dad she lives exclusively with me i never really get that whole like you know like i hate it when we try and like put a label and everything like you know that whole like yeah. co- co-parenting and things like that like she lives with me like Loretta lives with me she goes to school where we where I live her dad me and her dad her dad lives in North London um and she's always like lived with me but she still sees her dad and but we just don't really we do have like things but it, it, there's no real like set rules it's like so there's no like set routine like he will have her yeah she'll see him once a week on the weekend but 
you know, if he wants to, if he finishes, he works six days a week, but if he does finish, he can see her more. Um, and we're really flexible because look, I travel with Loretta as well sometimes. So it's not like everything's set in stone. Yeah. We're just quite, we've always just been quite like laid back with it. And that works for both of you or do you think that, that works? would rather her more? Um, I don't know. Like, well, it, again, it's hard because of work as well. Like where he works six days, um, I don't know if it could happen more. Yeah. Um, and I think that, look, we just have to, as times change, as she gets older, we'll, it will probably change again, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the moment, yeah, this setup is just what works for us. Yeah. Um and yeah that 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 could change what would you say like obviously you've mentioned that since you had loretta you feel like you just love like you two together you almost feel like it would be weird having someone else like yeah what what have been your struggles though being that kind of like solo parent single mom everything on you yeah um do you know what is on me when i get asked this question it's hard because i've never had it as a different way yeah yeah so I, I think that because people ask me as well was like oh what is it like growing up in a foster family because my parents were about the foster care but I think when you've only ever had it that way it's so hard to know what it would be like I think if it was that I came if, if, if it was a two-parent job and we were both raising the rest together living in the house together sharing the responsibilities and then all of a sudden oh, I was on it alone then I think it would be a shock to the system and it would be like but it's never, I've never experienced it. Like me yeah, and Loretta's dad never, we've never done it together. So I feel like that almost makes it easier that you don't have anything to compare it to. I think that it, when I do meet somebody and when I, I think that I will struggle because I've been so used yeah. to making every decision by myself, doing every pickup, drop off, every bedtime, every bath time. Look, I've got a really supportive family and sometimes Loretta will have the odd sleepover, but Loretta has I've basically done like I'd yes. say like 80% 90% of it like every holiday she's ever been on it's been me everything's been me so I think that I will struggle I think when I do meet somebody if I was going to have another child with somebody else and and raise it together like how <laughs> am I going to find that quite hard because of I've been yeah. so in control of Loretta's life and also as well like that adjustment with her with someone else yeah um but look i um, i say i find it hard but look um, it might make my life so much easier because of yeah look, even if i have friends come around sometimes they'll be like oh do you want me to do the dinner and stuff i'm like oh my gosh like yeah actually it would, oh God, it wow would, someone does that <laughs> someone else can do this is a thing <laughs> it would make my life easier as well i think that yeah they, i reckon there'll be when that 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 situation arises i think that there will be like so many like amazing so many things that will make me realize how much how much easier life yeah. is doing it with someone but also i think there's going to be challenges because it's always been this way i've never yeah. ever experienced mothers with any other way yeah do you have you done much dating like since you've had loretta like how do you navigate that being the sole parent and you know is it something you've been doing much of had the first fun? two years that loretta was born I had absolutely zero interest whatsoever. Like people would go to me, come on, like let's set you up, like let's like let's go out things. But I had like no interest yeah. at all. I think also throwing the mix that it was COVID, like people were doing walking dates. So I was like, if that's yeah. that drunk, no, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I thought I'm not going on a walk. I need a drink. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if I'm going to go out on a date, like. I want to. If I went on a like, walk on a walking date, I felt like by the end of the day, my hair would be. All over the place. We'll wait for I'd, COVID to blow up. I'd, but... I'd look so different at the end. Oh, at the end of the day than at the beginning of the day. Like, well, not for me. Yeah, but also as well, where I've been out of the game. So like, I'd had like two years in a relationship with Loretta's dad, like pretty much a year pregnant, and then like two years before yeah. I even started doing it. Like, I thought I've basically had five years out of the dating game. Like, I'm not gonna not have a drink like I need a drink I'm gonna be too nervous like yeah. I need I need a bit of Dutch courage can you imagine going on a walk with like with a bottle of wine <laughs> in a paper bag <laughs> a hip flask <laughs> of 
So yeah, I had like no interest when Loretta was really young, and also as well, my priorities were like elsewhere. Like I went yeah. back to work when Loretta was really young, um, and she wasn't in nursery until she was like sixteen months. So that first sixteen months, ex- especially, it was like whenever Loretta was sleeping, I was working, and I was yeah. so busy during COVID with like influencing like influencers, like the world boomed for us during COVID because of course everyone was on their phones. So I was working yeah. so many brands. So it was like whenever she had her nap times, I was on Zoom calls with brands. And it's like of an evening when she went down to bed, I was like writing up my creatives and sending them back for approvals and editing and stuff. So those first two years, my whole focus was um, raising Loretta and working hard so that I could buy a family home. Because um, at the time I was living in the house that I bought when I was like 21 and it was like a young person's house I wanted to buy a family home and it, it was all on me to like you know provide for Loretta so I was just so like focused and I just had no interest whatsoever um and then I think when she hit like two and like we we're getting in the swing of childcare and stuff I was like more open to it um and just more open to socializing but really from like two to three I think I probably I probably count on two hands how many dates I went on because really I just wanted to go out with my friends and have fun um and I think that it was more yeah like last year that I started like taking it a little bit more seriously like going on dates and actually like wanting to go on dates and enjoying them but to be fair because of yeah as I said like been out of the game for so long I've, it's just been like nice like just been like going out for dinner and like yeah being all and 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 yeah, and yeah. I, think I don't think I'm in like a massive rush this time like at this point in my life because I've already got Loretta yeah do you know what I mean it's not like I don't ever feel like I've got this like massive void in my life that needs to be filled by a man because you know I've got the family home by myself and I've got like a good career that I enjoy um we like I do lovely holidays with my sisters so it's not like I ever feel lonely like all my sisters are single so it's like we take Loretta away together all my friends partners work really long hours so whenever we do things and then are never there so I never really feel like this massive mm. void so in my head it's like I would love to meet someone because of I'd love more children eventually and it would be nice to share my life with someone but equally it's like I'm not desperate for it like and I, I think that I'm just going to enjoy it and not put too much pressure on it like I think that's the best we'll, way to do it and yeah I like in that way like you have like your boundaries, your values, and you'll wait for you don't want to compromise. That, yeah, you'll wait for someone that kind of like fits that. I feel like yeah. it takes a particular type of man to be with a single mum. Like, yeah, it's so independent. And like you said, like you've got your house yourself, you've got your career, like you've brought up your daughter on your own. You need a particular man that is yeah. able to kind of like fit into that. Yeah, I think that for me, it's like as well, it, it, I probably will end up going with someone that's got children as well yeah. because, you know, I'm 33. So, and it's like, historically, I've only ever dated guys that have been older than me. I mean, who's to say that I might not become a cougar? But normally, <laughs> I think that I'm a quiet cougar. <laughs> I was a cougar. No, <laughs> anyway. What is it? I'm, you know, yeah, I literally I just always... recently broke up with my boyfriend. He was quite a bit younger than me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've always got like most of the guys I've always dated have always been like five years older than me, like normally. Um, but I probably am going to go with someone with children. I feel like it would be, you can kind of like suss things out if they'd slot into family life yeah. easy when they've got kids. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I You'll work out what they're like with their children and how devoted they are. And yeah, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Would you would you go on dating apps? Like, what are your thoughts on the whole dating app situation? Yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit reluctant. Um, whilst it is like the 21st century of dating, I feel like I'm a little bit reluctant because I don't know. Like, I feel, I feel like, like people would maybe be matching with you for the wrong reasons, and you don't really know whether they're like, oh, like Lydia Bryan, yeah, get in there. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and I feel like I wouldn't like then like would it make it impress and then like oh, my whole family yeah yeah no, yeah. no it must it no, must be every ex-boyfriend would know that i'm on a dating app do you know what i mean which isn't embarrassing but it's like you just don't want everyone to know your business do you it's personal isn't it yeah but my sisters are on the dating apps and sometimes i have a little go on there so sometimes like 
they'll come round and I'll be like, oh, let me have a little go. Yeah, because I just want to, I just want to experience it. So I'll sit on my sister's Tinder and I'll be like, I'm back. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, I actually like enjoy it and I'll have a little go at it because I feel like, oh, I feel a bit, yeah, gutted that I've never experienced that part, part of like dating. But yeah, I'll get a little bit of fun out of my sister's one. So Would for me, I that like I've got, I've got to meet people out and about, really. Yeah. yeah. I guess the good thing about that is it does make you, like, go out. Like, I feel like a lot of people that rely on the app just sort of, like, stay in, like... That's what my you know, I think there's a nice like, reason to put yourself out there a bit more. Yeah, and my sister said that the dating app, she said that you match with people, but then you never actually end up meeting each other. Like, you just end up speaking to each other. It's like a virtual thing. She said it's so, like, rare that you actually end up meeting people. Like, so many people have said this to me. You don't end up meeting people. Well, yeah. I'm not very good at... It takes me, like, five working days to reply to my WhatsApp. I don't <laughs> mind, like, another... Barbara Lane. <laughs> I can't, I yeah, can't literally. No one's worse yeah. than this one. <laughs> it takes me so long to get back to people on WhatsApp. So never mind bloody another one. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, the only way that I really would meet people is, yeah, like, if I'm out with girls and, just like... Or if I'm at an event, that's, like, yeah, how I meet people yeah. so that's why yeah like i've pushed myself like the last couple of years to, like get a bit of a social life back like mm-hmm. yeah like going out and having fun with my friends who doesn't but equally like i'm going out because of you know that's how i would meet someone yeah and good old Debs and dave come in and look after the rest of me <laughs> <laughs> i want you to actually talk about your parents because obviously um your mum fosters children and she has done for what like a very long time 30, yeah like 32 wow. years wow so she was fostering children when you were growing up bit. yeah 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 i think she would i think i was yeah like one my, my eldest sister georgia was two um and she yeah she had two kids very close in age and um, there's only 13 months between me and um georgia and she was like i need a bit of a career change she was in fashion and she thought i can't do this career whilst raising two kids so let me think of a career that I can do um around family life and that when she discovered fostering and she thought that she would just do it whilst we were still young before we started school and here she is 32 that's years later that's amazing doing it so you are literally it. always around like probably like quite a big family yeah there was always like minimum six of us um yeah, we all there was always loads and loads of children in the house that were always changing. Do you feel like that made you more confident when you became a mum that you'd always been around children Definitely. like the same ages? Yeah, yeah. Like when I was pregnant, like there was never one part of me that ever like God. I had so many emotions and there was so many fears, but there was never any fears of my ability to be a mum because I've been raising yeah. kids since I was little. I always without saying this with a big head I always knew I'd be a good mum because yeah I've done it I've done it so much and I love it and I think if you love something you're going to be good at it like I've loved like when my mum used to get babies like, I just I absolutely like idolise them and fell in love with them and I used to love doing all parts of it like my mum's actual job at the foster care was really easy when, when we became teenagers because she didn't really do much when we weren't at school we were like as soon as I'd get in from school, that would be it. Like I'd get the baby, I'd play with them, I'd be, oh. I'd do the nappies, I'd do like bedtime, bath time, like I'd do all of it, and I absolutely loved it. Like you yeah, literally I'd, had like the the practice throughout your so like, teenage practice. years. I've had like, so, so, much, so much practice. Yeah, sounds better yeah. at school. Because do you think people you... like have a baby and they're like, oh, I had no experience yeah. with a baby? I, mean, that, I think that's the majority of people. Most people, yeah. they become a parent. I like... give you this baby, you're like, well, I'm a to do it. Yeah, the kid. Yeah, the, I knew everything. I never read one parenting book. I didn't do any research because I've known everything. I've lived and breathed it my whole life. Do you go on? <laughs> I think we're throwing it the same thing. Do you think you'd ever consider fostering? Yeah, I, I, I would consider it. Like, this is going back to the whole thing. Look, I would love to meet somebody. And I think it's going to happen for me. Like, um, I think that, it. yeah, I feel like it would. Uh, like I, it I will. Like, you know, I'm 33. I feel like I I am going to go, I am going to meet someone and I will have children with someone. But look, if it doesn't happen, 
for me, that's not like the be and end of my life. Yeah. Like for me, my ultimate goal is to have children and where I've come from a family that my parents have adopted, they've got foster kids. Like I've come from that upbringing. I know that I could love a child. I've loved every single one of my mum, ba- mum and dad's babies that they've had. And I've absolutely loved them. My heart has been ripped out when they've left the house. So I know that I would be able to love a child that isn't mine equally as much as I would yeah. that isn't biologically mine. So for me, yeah, I would never rule out adoption. I would never rule out doing it again by myself. Um, and yeah, I would I would consider fostering, not at this point in my life because fostering isn't just like parenting. Obviously, that's the main thing of it, but you, there's also other parts to it, like facilitating contact with families and um, you have to do quite a bit of training for it. It's a full-time job. And mm. I mean, I've got a full-time job. You know, I work five days a week anyway at the moment and it's like I'm so busy with what I do. So it would have to be when things dry up and I always say this like I'm always like when is it going to dry up because when I first started doing TOWIE I was like oh you know it might only last a year and now I'm like 15 years down the line and I'm still like in the industry so um yeah look if it dries up and I, oh I'm not enjoying it anymore and I want a career change yeah fostering would be like up there with like a career change um but I think it would probably be something that I'd do when I'm like older a little bit older in age so you have recently released your first children's book i have do you want to tell us about that because i I I feel like like i'm a bit like gel boy like you know i feel like i've done so so many things in my 15 years um but yeah this is like a whole new career um Mm -hmm. and a part of my career that i really really love so i hope that you know, this is the start of a new chapter for me. Um, pardon the pun. Um, but yeah, I had, this, I, I had this idea that I was going to write this children's book when I was pregnant with Loretta because I found that I was looking for children's books that represented ch- ch- uh, single parent families. And I just found that there was like a real lack of books um, out there. And I felt that a lot of them were quite factual um and just not magical which is what children love children just love magical stories and stories about adventures so i wanted to write a single parent um book that wasn't an obvious single parent book um because i think when it's rammed down your throat and really in your face it's unengaging for a child so children love animals um or elephants in the wild a single mum so they became my characters did you know that? No, the really, that. yeah. All single mums, all, all elephants in the world are single mums. Yeah, that's the, so. I the mean, men impregnate. I know this is why I've got an elephant in my bio. I want elephants, elephants in your bio. So, um, the males pre- impregnate the women, and um, but they're solitude uh, um, male elephants. So they leave before uh, the baby's born, the calf's born, and then what happens is. The herds, when you see elephant herds, it's um, families that are the matriarch, which is normally the grandmother, then her daughters, and then all their children. Oh, then, which really? is women. Like, support each other. All the women. Oh, right. That's so what made me so that. emotional. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's crying about the elephants. That's, not really, that, that's amazing. Yeah. So what, and these when... male elephants just go around, just like, oh, and they're yeah. about. And then they just and go then, to the next one. And they leave. Yeah, then they leave. Like, and then sounds like, Humans just not the <laughs> <No. laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and then the um, and then the yeah, that all the baby elephants all race together. And then when the, oh. the when the males get to a certain age, then they leave the herd. But the women all they stay together forever. I love so, that. Isn't that I just know. Like humans? Do you know what? I'd 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 love that as humans. If just like all us girls can just get together and just all live together. Like, yeah, that there. Yeah. It would be the dream. Would you yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, they became like the foundation. They became the main characters. Um, and then the story just evolved so much as well because then when Loretta was born, I kind of wanted the book to mirror our personality slightly. And I wanted the book to be relatable as well because I want the mums to enjoy it. So, it, you know, it's all about like a mother and a daughter. The, 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 the daughter's got boundless amounts of energy, fearless. And all the mum wants is like a chilled, quiet, <laughs> quiet life. 
Um, so, um, yeah, the story just shows like the chaos that comes from being a parent, magic and adventure for children. Um, and it also just represents um, a single parent family. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where the idea was born. Um, and I love yeah, that. I've, I've got it. For kids to feel represented, like that's the most important thing, isn't it? Because I think for children yeah. to see themselves represented in stories, and also as well, not even for children from single parent families, but from all families to see different family setups. It's only going to create the next generation of more inclusive people. You know, we're in this like day and age where we're all just trying to be more inclusive, accepting of people, no matter what your like gender, your sex, your race, your religion, and also like accepting that this is what all different family setups look like and. You know, the moral of the story is basically, you know, that all that matters is the love that comes from family, no matter what family looks like. Um, you yeah. know. So, yeah, that was the idea. But what was it called? It's Mummy and Me. Mummy and Me. And where can our followers buy it? Oh, you can buy it in um, selected uh, Sainsbury's and Waterstones. And then you can buy it online at Amazon, WH Smear. I always get told off, is it Amazon or Amazon? Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. 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 Uh, WH Smith, um, Foils, um, Bookshop. Um, that's all of them. I've got, I've linked I've linked everything in my bio. Nice. So there's all the direct links. I mean, everyone on just has Amazon, don't they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got it and I've read it to the kids. I, I loved it because I think being a single mum as well, like, especially for Blake and Ivy, they're six years old and they're at school and none of their friends, parents yeah. are single parents. That they're all they all come from the, you know, that traditional like two parent household. And I think it is just a nice way to kind of like see themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. And like you said, it's also to maybe educate other other people and realise that it isn't always that typical Two parent, two kid household. I didn't realise how many single mums there were until I became a single mum. I don't know yeah. if like in this little bubble. And obviously, you know, it's fifteen percent of the UK are single parent families. It's crazy, majority. isn't it? Over eighty like percent been... of that of that statistic is mum. Mum's yeah. that, that that doesn't surprise me. No, yeah, it's, but it's such a ma- we're such a massive proportion of the UK. So why? Why I know. books? Why uh, why are we only watching mum yeah. and telly? So I feel like until I became a single mum, I felt like there was such a taboo about single mums. Mm-hmm. Like it was almost like that sense of failure or like like you were saying, like judgment or like being irresponsible and things like that. And actually like when you're put in that situation and you become a single mum, I don't know, I feel like I've become not that I was ignorant before. But I feel like you have like a whole new understanding and like Definitely. respect for single moms. Like my respect for anyone doing it on their own is like paramount. Definitely. I'm I'm exactly the same as you. Like I feel like I like fed into that taboo as well. And like, but now here I am and it's like I was empowered so much by single mum. Now I'm so proud. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If I even if I go out and I meet somebody or say it's first thing I say, Oh yeah, I'm a single mum. I'm so proud to like yeah. my flag. And yeah, I just think that like the more that we all empower each other, the more that we won't feel that shame if we ever find ourselves in that situation where we're going to be like, we're going to face parenthood as single parent, that we don't feel like almost like nervous to. No, I, I, to, I love or that. feel like a failure because of, look, we aren't all supposed to live our lives the same way. Like, yeah, yeah that, that fairy tale is nice, the two, like, two parent family household, but life, life isn't perfect. And, like we don't all have to do it the same way like let's write our own rules and you know if we are going to be single parents don't feel ashamed of that feel bloody proud because of yeah, it to be able to decide to do it yourself and and you know you've got to have like a lot of strength and resilience and determination and um yeah I'm, I'm i think it makes i think that. it it makes you who like the type of parent that I feel like I feel I like I'm, a, to I'm a better parent. Yeah, since like, I've become like single. With the whole like mention of yeah. like the taboo and like feeling like a bit of a failure. Like I feel like I, I wrongly kind of like 
I'm not. I don't want to say I judged single parents because I don't really think it really crossed my mind until I became one. But when I became one, I definitely judged myself. I kind of was like, oh god, now I'm a single mum. Like, oh, like I almost like felt like I viewed myself lower than like married women in these like happy relationships with their children. And Do you know what I think that is because I think that our mum's generation, everything yeah. that was on TV and growing up, it was always like, oh, the poor single mum, like the pity party for the single mum, the mum that's struggling. Like, so I yeah. feel like we're this generation where we're changing it. Like, do you know what I mean? We're like this generation of women that are like, well, no, like we can like work and support our families and, you know, we can thrive from being single parents. But I think that we're like the turning point in that like taboo you know there's always yeah. like that era where it changes yeah um, and I think that we were conditioned probably yeah growing up and watching telly that our parents generation yeah that, that it, it was kind of like oh poor single mum you know yeah, or like oh the reckless single mum the one that yeah we that's what I feel like it is it's like the reckless single mum like oh yeah like, how yeah. responsible like but this is why things like this like you know podcasts and like these apps that are out there whatever we can do to just kind of like rewrite the center of a single mom like yeah and that's a- why we've pretty much done this podcast like we really did see that there is a community like you said like it's like the single mom club like yeah. although not all our listeners are single parents it is lonely doing it on your own and being able to kind of support each other so through it being like heard and validated and feeling like when you see other people speaking about it and like the struggles or I don't know like things like seeing you traveling with Loretta like that inspires other people like I'm really trying to travel with my two on my own and not be like held down and defined by you doing it on your own of course it's going to be hard but I feel like in turn like we all try and inspire each other by seeing like nothing is out of our reach just because we're a single parent yeah yeah, and nothing that that's yeah totally what I try to do with my platform as well. Like, of course, I show I show the bad times as well, but naturally in life, I feel like yeah, I've really thrived from being a single mum, and it's like I, I like sharing that because if anyone finds themselves in that situation and they're worrying, you know, like yeah. there's people out there that have done better being single parents. Yeah, not 100%. like not in 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 every, in every aspect in life, you know, like like happier and and you know still being able to work and all of these things you know like we can you can thrive and you can actually do better in life even doing it by yourself because of um yeah I think it pushes you it pushes you I think that's why people wanted you on the podcast I think that that is pretty much what you do represent so you can do it yeah. So no, it's amazing. We thank you so much for thank coming you, on the podcast. I feel amazing. like yeah. people are really going to resonate with everything you, that you said, and I feel like you've inspired me in ways because Aww. I do find it really hard on my own with three children. But yeah. doing it on your own isn't like it, it's it's a strength. At yeah, the end of the day, it is. You know, and people that maybe are listening to this and and are in those stages of becoming a single parent like take it from people that are living it and breathing it like it it can actually make you a better mum yeah yeah and it's better for your children to see you thrive and if you're happy they'll be happy yeah so guys I'm also gonna say that you like as well like I've only got one so really I mean you're giving me all the praise you two are amazing because of I mean I'm I'm thriving but if I had another couple <laughs> I think that I would be drowning a little bit more oh I oh, no, it's fine I am drowning really <laughs> my head's barely above the water at the moment oh it's just like yeah storm paddling but um no anyone listening to this if you haven't already got it please go and get Lydia's book because it yeah. it, it is magical like it's so so lovely um, your kids will feel like represented even if you're not a single parent it's nice for your children to be reading about other family setups like it's just that's what we need to be nurturing in the new generation growing up yeah, yeah. absolutely should we we always end our episode with a little affirmation okay so in my dear reader page i say 
through all my fellow single mums, I wanted to write this down in case you needed to hear it today. You are brave, you are strong, you are independent, you are celebrated. I love that. Affirmation. That is an affirmation of art. Affirmation. <laughs> no, we love that. Thank you so much for coming on um, the episode. And yeah, it's been so lovely having you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Nice to Bye. see you. Bye. Bye.